why don't we have a grateful heart as we should? Why are we as grateful as we should? Porque no somos tan agradecidos como somos. And I came out with like three different reasons why. This is my opinion. Yo pensé en tres diferentes razones por qué no somos tan agradecidos como debemos. Y este agradecimiento tiene que ver con cómo ser cristiano, siendo cristiano. This is, this is a grateful heart as being Christian, not being whoever, not Oprah or those famous people. They're grateful, but they have their way of, of showing gratefulness. No son como los famosos que son agradecidos, pero no son como ellos. Son como unos cristianos. Why are we not as grateful as we should? So we're going to get started by reading three scriptures. Vamos a comenzar para eh, leer tres escrituras en la Biblia. La primera se encuentra en Primera Crónicas 16.34. The first one is in First Chronicles 16.34. Hey, and I have it right there. You don't have to look for it. Isn't that cool? So because I have it up there, that means that I'm going to act like a Spanish teacher, how I teach in my class, and you guys are going to say it with me. Yes, ustedes van a participar como si están en mi clase y van a leer conmigo, even in English or Spanish. That's why they're both up there. Okay, uno, dos y tres. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endureth forever. Amen. Amen. Muy bien. La próxima, usted un poco más ánimo. Okay, the next one, a little bit more, you know. Mm. All right, next next scripture, we have it in First Chronicles, I mean, um, First Thessalonians 5.18. Primera Thessalonicenses 5.18. I want to hear you this time, okay? One, two, three. Give thanks in all circumstances, for his God's will. Amen, amen. No escuché nada en español. I didn't hear anything in Spanish. That's okay. Sela, you were talking? Oh, okay. Well, he's, she said it in English. It's okay. All right. The third scripture is um, Philippians 4, 6. Filipenses 4, 6. Vamos. Una, dos y tres. Anxious about anything, but in every situation, by thanksgiving. Amen. You guys sound just like my classroom. You sound just like, ustedes suenan igualito como en mi clase de español. Eh, me, me, me. Así mismo suenan ellos. Okay, those three scriptures are really important because they have to do with Thanksgiving. But there's a million scriptures. I don't know how many exactly. I'm exaggerating. But there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible having to do with Thanksgiving. Muchas escrituras en la Biblia que tienen que ver con el, el um, eh, ser, ser agradecidos. La primera razón por qué nosotros no somos agradecidos. The first reason why we don't we're not grateful is because we don't know what we have. We really don't know what we have. Nosotros no sabemos lo que tenemos. Muchas veces vivimos en esta vida y pensamos que tenemos lo peor. Siempre estamos pensando en lo peor. We're always living this life and we're thinking, I don't have this, I don't have that, I wish I had that. And we don't think about, like, okay, you have lungs, right? Uh, you have legs. Tienen, tienen eh, eh, oops. <laughs> tienen un pulmón. Tienen dos pulmones. Tienen piernas, tienen brazos. You have ways to function that God has given you. You have so many things to give thanks to God for, but you forget you even have these things until you get sick. Ustedes muchas veces eh, no se dan cuenta que tienen todos estos órganos en este, en este cuerpo, pero solamente agradecen quizás cuando están enfermos y, se, y le hace falta estos órganos. Quiero que conozcan a un pastor y vamos a tocar un video. We're going to show a video here about a special pastor. He's very special. in our legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. <laughs> People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down. And here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know. And there were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, because wishing won't help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. 
It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's hand? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Okay, bueno, you saw that pastor, right? Does he look like a regular pastor? ¿El parece un pastor regular? No. Él no era pastor en ese tiempo. He wasn't a pastor then. But actually, to your surprise, he was saying that he thought, well, I'd probably never get married. I'd probably never have a child. But he actually did get married and he has a baby. Él, él se casó y tuvo bebé. Okay, cuando usted ve a una persona así, usted dice, oh, pobrecito. Like when you look at that person, you're like, oh, poor God, bless his heart. No, you should not. You should not look at people like that. You should look at them like, wow, I'm blessed. Okay, I have arms and I take them for granted. I have legs and I take them for granted. And I don't drag around the floor like that. And I don't, I don't slide a slide like that. I'm scared to slide a slide like that. Yo me da miedo meterme una, en uno de esas cosas de esa. Eso me da miedo a mí. Pero él lo hace. Like he does it and he's not afraid to do it. You know, he must go faster than I would. Él va más rápido que yo porque yo tengo esto y tengo esto. Y él no tiene eso. He doesn't have those things. So you look at a person like that and you have to be reminded because that's the problem with us. Es el problema con nosotros que no sabemos lo que tenemos. We don't understand what we have. So I want you to take a minute right now. Take a minute. Not a minute. Doesn't that. And start thinking about things you have that you take for granted. What are things you have you've taken for granted that that you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I needed that. I needed, you know, I couldn't, you know, I have my eyes, but then I had, I had, I had eye surgery and I couldn't see for a minute. Or, you know, pastor had eye surgery. El pastor tuvo cirugía de los ojos y, y le quitaron la vista por un momento. No pudo ver nada. Y podía suceder que podía estar ciego. Y no, le recuperó la vista. And, you know, he was, for a second, he was without, he was blind, but he was able to see. But for that minute, por ese minuto, el pastor pudo pensar, wow, thank God that I can see, que puedo ver, porque mucha gente no pueden ver. So I want you to think in your heart, just right now, think about something that you, you would miss. Le harían falta. ¿Qué le harían falta si le quitan? Si le quitan todo en la vida. If they were to take away, if God were to take away everything in your life, everything, everything, what would you miss the most? ¿Qué le haría más falta si Dios le quita todo de la vida? La vista, la habilidad de caminar. Le quita los familiares, el trabajo, el dinero. If he were to take away your family, your ability to walk, to talk, what would be the thing that you would miss the most? Now, you're probably thinking, oh, gosh, look, I, I bet it's more than one thing, right? Es más de una cosa, ¿verdad? Comenzaron a pensar, dijo, oh, espérate, hay muchas cosas. Por eso que cuando venimos a la iglesia, some, when we come to church, we have, that long list has to come with you. Okay, esa lista larga tiene que venir contigo. Oh, estoy agradecido por mi vista. Estoy agradecido porque puedo caminar. Estoy agradecido porque puedo hablar. I can speak. I can, I can hear. I can talk. I can walk. You got to come to church with that list of gratefulness, of all the things you're grateful for, even the things you can't see, hasta las cosas que no puede ver. The liver, you know, what does that do? You know, what, what, does, what does those organs do that you don't see? The appendix is there, and... And those veins you have, and the white blood cells, and the white, the, the red blood cells, la, la, los glóbulos rojos, los glóbulos blancos, la, la, la pendis. Hay cosas en tu cuerpo que tú no sabes que, que están funcionando para tu bien. Y por eso es que tú estás aquí hoy. This is the reason why you are here today. So just remember that, Pastor, Pastor Nick. The next reason why we don't have a grateful heart is because we lack muscle weak. We have muscle weakness. We have muscle weakness, that's right. We have muscle weakness. Tenemos debilidad muscular. Now you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with being grateful, okay? What does it have to do with being grateful? Well, to me, Jesus is my strength, right? Dios es nuestra, nuestro amparo, nuestra fortaleza. Without him, we're weak. We have muscle weakness, which means without him, you can't acknowledge that you are grateful for anything, yeah? Right? You miss this. And there's something I want to share with you. It's a disease that's called ALS. 
It stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's very long. Es una enfermedad que se llama la esclerosis lateral amyotrophica. Amyotrophica, perdón, yo lo estoy diciendo muy mal. But this disease takes away all muscle function. And I learned about this disease this past week at school. Aprendí de esta enfermedad en la escuela esta semana porque vino una directora a hablar con nosotros. A lady came to speak to us this week, and she talked to us about a lady named, named Karen Hester. Karen Hester es, es una persona que era directora en Donahoe School. Era una persona muy importante que era eh, una entrenadora de, de muchos deportes, hasta el voleibol. She was a, a trainer. She was a, a, a coach at Donahoe School, and she did everything. She graduated from there. She was a student all the way to being a trainer and then an administrator. So ella fue de ser estudiante ahí, se graduó hasta que fue una entrenadora y fue una administradora en la escuela. And Karen Hester, I never, I don't know if I got to meet her because Elijah was in school during this time, but I don't know if I got to meet her. No sé si pude conocerla porque mi hijo Elijah estaba en esa escuela en ese tiempo cuando ella estaba ahí. Pero um, ella era una persona muy activa. Imagínese una persona muy activa. Imagine a person very active. Like you see me doing Zoom, but you see how active I am and how crazy I am. Think about that. But think about a very active person who can't use their muscles. Can't use their muscles. So, This is what this, this disease does. Esto es lo que esta enfermedad hace. Muscle weakness, debilidad muscular. Muscle twitches, tiene contracciones musculares. Cramps or tight and stiff muscles. Los calambres y se le aprietan los músculos son muy rígidos. Muscle loss and, or atrophy, la pérdida de músculo o la atrofía. Slurred and nasal speech, torpeza y voz nasal. Difficulty chewing and swallowing. Dificultad para masticar y tragar. Excessive choking. Ahogamiento excesivo. Excessive shortness of breath. Falta de aliento excesivo. And it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. To un, unintended weight loss. Pérdida de, de peso involuntaria. Hand or leg weakness. No puede mover las manos ni los, los pies. And these people inside, Miss Hester, inside of her, she was like a prisoner in her own body. So we're gonna, ella era una prisionera en su propio cuerpo. Así que I want you to participate with me in this exercise, okay? All you guys do is stay right there, okay? Now, I want you to stop moving right now. Stop moving. Don't move. Don't twitch. No se muevan. No mueven nada, okay? No mueven. Okay, ahora traten de mirar alrededor del cuarto sin moverse. Try to look around the room without moving. Try to look around the room without moving. Stay right there. People are talking, they're having fun. You can't move. La gente están hablando y, y regocijando y usted no se puede mover. You can't move. Okay, now stop breathing. Okay, breathe again. Okay, that's what it feels like to have ALS. Eso es lo que se siente para tener esta enfermedad, esclerosis lateral amotrófica. Eso es lo que se siente. That's what it feels like. It wasn't good, was it? Who wants to do that, huh? ¿Quién quiere tener esa? ¿Quién quiere eso? Who wants that? Hey, hey, raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody right here? No. Well, this is just an example that I wanted to show you that we got to give God praise. We got to give God thanks because people die like that. They're looking around. You're stiff. Looking around. Están mirando. No pueden moverse. Mirando. Si tienen dolor de cabeza, nadie sabe. Si tiene dolor de estómago, nadie sabe. If someone has a stomachache, a headache, they can't talk, they can't say anything. They're just looking around. They, they feel every moment. They see it. They see and feel every moment. Ellos sienten y ven cada momento, pero no pueden hacer nada. They can't do a thing for it. You are not in that situation. You're not there. God forbid you get there. Que Dios quiera que nunca lleguen a ser así. But this is to remind us that we forget who we are. We forget that God, sorry, that God gave us this body. And the scripture I have for you is, you know, I didn't do the other scripture about, oh, I didn't do the scripture about, um, what, what's the next slide? Oh, okay. All right. Well, what I wanted to tell you, lo que quería decirle es que Jesús es un buen ejemplo de ser una persona agradecida. Jesús siempre ha sido agradecido. He's always been grateful. I don't, I haven't seen a scripture that says, thank you, God. He doesn't say, thank you, God. But reading this passage right here, 
Our Father in, who art in heaven, Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If, as you read that whole scripture of what Jesus was praying to God, cuando ven lo que Dios estaba, lo que Jesús estaba orando a Dios, ustedes piensan que Jesús era una persona agradecida? You think that God, that Jesus was a person that was grateful? He was. Why? Why in that scripture, what makes you think that he was grateful? What makes you think, you could talk to me as far as, what makes you think he's grateful? Why? You could talk. You talk loud because I can't hear you. Okay, he's, he called him holy. Le, yo lo llamo santo. Santificado sea tu nombre. ¿Qué más? Is this prayer about Jesus or about God? Este, esta oración es para Dios, de Dios, o te, se trata todo que ve con Jesús? Well, yeah, but it's still about him. He's putting himself where he wants God to work in him. Él quiere que Dios trabaje en él. Y esta oración nos dice a nosotros que él, él es agradecido. Es, él es agradecido. Also, let's read this other verse that I love this verse. And um, what is my what is my next verse? I lost myself. Okay, okay. Bueno, esa es la explicación de uh, the the muscular disease, the ALS. Esta es la explicación de los músculos. Y está diciendo aquí qué es el principal trabajo de los músculos. What is the muscles main main job? What do you think it is? Does anybody know what it is? Yeah. Yeah, movement, movement, it's for movement. So, hey, everybody go like this. Hey, hey, todo el mundo haga así. Whoa, whoa, para que se despierten allá atrás que están durmiendo. Yay, those people falling asleep back there. Sí, hagan así, sí. This shows that your muscles are moving. Eso quiere decir que sus músculos están moviéndose. Hay una escritura que dice en la Biblia, and, and I'm trying to find it. Why can't I find the book? Okay, well, anyway. The main function of the muscle is for movement, Okay. So, la función principal del sistema muscular es el movimiento. Muscles are the only tissue in the body that has the ability to contract and therefore move other parts of the body. El músculo son lo el único tejido en el cuerpo que tiene la habilidad de contraerse. Por lo tanto, mover las otras partes del cuerpo. Doesn't that feel like Jesus? It's like Jesus is our muscle. If we don't have that, we're just like jiggly. Si no tenemos a Jesús... Somos nosotros así como una gelatina. Es, Dios es nuestro músculo. Y nosotros no hace falta el músculo. No hace falta Jesús. Más de Jesús. Por eso que no somos agradecidos. No, no nos acordamos de Jesús. We don't remember Jesus. We're like, oh, uh, oh yeah, whatever. He sacrificed his life for me. It's all right. It's just no big deal. No es gran cosa que se sacrificó su vida por mí. Pero sí es gran cosa. It is a big deal. So the third thing is, Oh, and that's my verse right there. This is my favorite verse. Este es mi favorito versículo aquí. And the verse is, can you guys read it together? Uno, dos y tres. Muy bien. So, I think that's better. I guess you guys have muscles. Tienen músculos. Ustedes pueden hablar. Sí, muy bien. Okay, so, in him I live, I move, and I have my being. En él yo, I don't know in Spanish, porque en él vivimos y nos movemos y somos. Somos en Él, en Él. Él es nuestro músculo. He is our muscle. Without Him, we cannot move. And this is why we need to remember that, this is why we need to be grateful that He's our muscle. He's the one that gives us the ability to move other parts of the body, to be able to move from this place to over there, to do all the things that we need to do. He's the one that does that. And we forget sometimes. The third thing I was going to talk about today is, I don't think we love Him enough. No creo que lo, lo queremos o lo amamos suficiente. Um, do you love God? Would you say you love God? ¿Ustedes piensan que aman a Dios? ¿Sí? ¿Piensan? ¿Más o menos? ¿Un poco? Okay. What do you do for God that you do for other people? Like, ¿qué hacen ustedes por Dios? ¿Qué hacen por otra gente? La misma cosa. ¿Qué hacen? What do you think? It is for you to think. You don't have to say it. But what do you do for God that you do for other people? Let me see. Well, you know, I... I talk to God. Yeah. 
Yeah, I talk to him and I study him. Like if my husband, I have to study him. I talk to him. If I don't talk to my husband, si no hablo con mi esposo, ahí no hay relación, ahí no, hay, no tenemos nada. We don't have anything there. We don't talk, right? I have to study him so I can know how to love him because I need to know what he likes. Tengo que estudiarlo para saber lo que él quiere y lo que le gusta para yo, para yo complacerle en esa, en, ahí. But what do you do for others that you don't do for God? What are things you do for others that you don't do for God? You know, when I started going to school, cuando yo regresé a la universidad, I got worried. I said, oh, no, I'm going to be studying all these books. I'm going to feel like a hypocrite because I'm studying all these books, and I don't study the Bible enough. Yo sentí, cuando regresé a la, a, a la universidad, yo voy a ser hipócrita porque estoy estudiando todos estos libros para tener un título y no estudio mi Biblia suficiente. Eh, para mí es hipocresía. Quizá para nadie, you know, for me it's being hypocrisy. For you, maybe not. But for me, it was like, that's not right. So I made an effort. I made a, a conscious effort to get up every morning early at 4 a.m. and to study my Bible and to pray. Y yo hice lo posible para levantarme todos los días a las 4 de la mañana, estudiar la Biblia y orar. Because I don't want God to feel like something else is taking his spot. I don't want him to think that. Yo no quiero que Dios me mire a mí y diga, oh, tú estás en la escuela y ahora no me quieres. No quiero que él sienta así, no se sienta así de mí. Yo quiero que él esté agradecido de mí. I want him to be pleased with me. I want to be able to go to heaven and he's not like, no, depart, my, depart from me, I don't know you. Yo no quiero llegar al cielo y él me diga, yo no te conozco. No, I don't want to be like that. I want to please God, and because I please God, that's the reason why I am grateful. Estoy agradecida de todo. Y yo sé que ustedes ahí tienen historias de dónde Dios los sacó y cómo Dios podía permitir que podía morir y no murieron. Están aquí. I know you guys have stories of times that you could have been dead, but God chose otherwise. Right? I know there's uh, some of you that think that you could have taken your own life and you're still here. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes han pensado, yo he, yo he querido tomar mi vida y matarme, pero ustedes están aquí, ¿verdad? Por la gracia de Dios. For the glory of God, you are here. And it's not for you to sit down. It's not for you to sit down and not be grateful. No es para que ustedes se sienten ahí y no sean agradecidos diariamente con Dios. All right. Tengo un, otra escritura, la última, porque dice aquí, What does the Bible say about ungratefulness? ¿Qué dice la Biblia de no ser agradecidos? En 2 Timoteo 3, 1 al 5, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. También debes saber esto, que en los prosteros días vendrán tiempos peligrosos. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treasurers, and it's a long list, whoa. Porque habrá hombres amadores de sí mismos, avaros, vanagloriosos, soberbios, blasfemos, desobedientes a los padres, ingratos, impíos, sin afecto, natural, impacable. Well, I'm saying all this stuff. Do you guys fall into any of that list? Anybody, anybody in here fall into one of these things? Cause I know I have. Alguien aquí ha caído en una de esta, en esta lista, en esa lista? Porque yo sé que yo he estado ahí. Yo sé que sí. What, what happens to us if we're ungrateful? ¿Qué pasa con nosotros si no estamos agradecidos de Dios? ¿Qué pasa? Well, there's Romans 1.21, because all this is in the Bible. Todo esto está en la Biblia. Romanos 1.21. Y no tengo la escritura en español aquí. Do I have it in Spanish? Is it the next one? No? Okay. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as, a, as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. What happens to you when you are not grateful to God? Your heart will become darkened. Have you felt your heart become darkened already? Ustedes han sentido su corazón, porque esta escritura dice que la gente que no son agradecidos, su corazón se pone como oscuro. Quiere decir que cuando está oscuro no puedes ver. You can't see. You can't even see that you need to be grateful. Like some of the young people that you don't appreciate your parents. And your parents are working hard. You don't, you're, you're, you're like this. You don't see it. You don't see that your parents are working hard. Los jóvenes a veces no aprecian que los padres están vivos que están ahí, están trabajando duro para ellos. Ustedes parecen que tienen los, los ojos cerrados porque no ven. No, de, no permita que su corazón se ponga oscuro. Do not permit that your heart 
become darkened by this. We need to be grateful to God. We need to be grateful to God right now. And I think that we should start right now. Is There's hope for you. <laughs> hay, hay esperanza para todos nosotros. Ah. <laughs> hay esperanza para todos. If you feel like you are not grateful enough, it's time you start now. It's okay. It's all right. You just confess, Lord, I'm so sorry. I have not been grateful enough. There's so much I need to be grateful for. And I apologize. Diga, Señor, yo te pido perdón. Perdóname, Señor. Que no soy agradecido suficiente. Because, Lord forbid, tomorrow, let's say mom dies. Mañana su mamá se muere. Papá, dad dies. Brothers and sisters die. Los hermanos y hermanas se mueren. Este lugar se derrumba. Terremoto. Todos se van. Todos nos vamos. And you were never grateful. You're going you're gonna to you're gonna feel very guilty. You're going to have a bitter heart. Si eso le pasa a ustedes, ustedes van a tener un corazón muy, muy amargado. Porque no lo hicieron ahora. Look at the person next to you right now. Mira la persona al lado tuyo. Okay? Is that person important to you? Esa persona es importante para ti? Yeah? Well, tell them, I'm grateful to have you in my life. Dile, yo estoy agradecido de tenerte en mi vida. Carlos, también. <laughs> okay, and this is how we should live life. Debemos vivir la vida así, pensando que no sabemos. La Biblia dice que no nos promete mañana. Mañana no es prometido. Tomorrow is not promised to us. The person next to you might not be there tomorrow. La persona al lado tuyo quizá no estará ahí. So, Take advantage of the time now. Be grateful for what you have. Tenga, tenga, agradec tenga agradecido de lo que tienen y agradecido con Dios porque Él le ha dado todo. God has given you everything on this earth. Dios le ha dado todo. Le ha permitido todo hasta, el, hasta cuando lo, no castiga. Es un buen Dios, un buen Padre. He's a good God and a good Father because He rebukes us. So I hope that this message stays with you. I hope that it convicts you. Espero que que ustedes sintieron algo con este mensaje. Espero que sientan que cuando van adelante estén agradecidos porque el pastor ahora mismo en México está viendo cosas que quizá él no quiere ver. You know, pastor is probably in Mexico seeing things he doesn't want to see. You know, and I know some of you have seen those things. Some of you have seen the poverty and, and a lot of, um, you know, war and stuff like that. Ustedes, algunos de ustedes han visto esto, han visto pobreza. Don't take it away. Don't take it away from your heart. If you've been through some, something, don't get rid of it. That's what Pastor says. He's like, it's, it's not bad to get rid of the pain. Keep the pain, but then you got to give thanks. Give thanks and testify through the pain. El pastor no ha dicho antes, si tiene dolor, si a veces se mantiene el dolor para que se acuerda que tienen que ser agradecidos y darle gracias a Dios por esas cosas. 